2019 was a weird year for gaming. All of the publishers held out their big franchises for next year and next generation. Most of the major releases were plagued with technical issues or glaring flaws that would normally be disqualifying, and some were just horrible. In my opinion, the best games of 2019 all sit around a B grade, slightly above average, but by no means generation defining or must haves in the same way that Red Dead Redemption 2 or God of War were in 2018. Nothing really blew me away, and judging by all of your comments in recent videos, many of you guys feel the same way. This makes the selection of a game of the year very difficult to achieve. For instance, one game could be remarkably fun, worthy of extensive laudations by way of its gameplay loop, but its narrative is so weak it's hard to justify rewarding it. Or, perhaps, the narrative is expansive and impressive, but the technical issues cause it to fall in overall standings. The point is that this year has been one of transition, mostly because of next year's big console reveals. In other words, it's just an odd time. The closest comparable year in my mind was 2014, when next-gen adoption was still very low and many of that year's games were bug-filled messes. Just to put it into perspective, Dragon Age Inquisition won Game of the Year in 2014. A fine game, sure, but certainly nowhere near the likes of The Witcher 3, which would win just a year later, or Grand Theft Auto V, which won the year prior when the show was still run by Spike TV. Yeah, that's a throwback. The point is, I've been racking my brain for the last few weeks trying to decide in what order to put these games. And... I've finally settled on it. This is my list of the best games of the year for 2019. I have two separate lists, one for indie and AA titles and another for AAA games. I've separated them like this because I feel it unfair to compare an indie title made by 10 people to a multi-million dollar project that was crafted by thousands. And also, this should go without saying, but I will be showing gameplay sequences from these games. So. Avert your eyes if you're sensitive to light spoilers. And lastly, a quick shout out to our honorable mentions for 2019, Greedfall, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and Monster Hunter World Iceborne. I didn't have enough time to finish Greedfall, so I can't comfortably make a judgment on it, and while I did enjoy the Resident Evil 2 Remake, it is a remake at the end of the day, which for me is disqualifying for Game of the Year. And the same is true of Iceborne. It's fantastic and, in effect, a game to itself, but at the end of the day, it's still a DLC expansion, no matter how big it may be. To begin, the top three indie games of the year. First is The Outer Wilds. This was recommended to me by a viewer, and we played it on stream over the summer, and wow. It came out of nowhere to me. I went in blind, and I am so glad that I did. If you like calming adventure-based games that feature the most fluid interplanetary exploration system that I have ever seen, then this game is definitely worth trying. The runner-up for Indie Game of the Year is Disco Elysium. This isometric murder mystery game has received raucous praise for its writing, which is truly impressive. I found myself actually laughing out loud many times while playing, and the robust role-playing systems make it one of the most hilarious replayable games of this year. There's no doubt, Disco Elysium is definitely worth a try. And the indie game of the year is A Plague Tale Innocence. When Focus Home Interactive reached out to me earlier this year and asked me to give this game a shot, I had no idea the treat I was in for. This is a third-person stealth game with a heavy focus on the narrative. The graphics are great, the world building is fantastic, and it's an experience that's short, but one that knows its worth and doesn't overstay its welcome. It's a lean, mean story machine, and I cannot recommend it enough. Simply put, if a double-A budgeted Naughty Dog style game sounds interesting, then A Plague Tale Innocence is worth a shot. And now for the AAA games, the big boys. You're playing with the big boys now. Playing with the big boys now. Oh, that's pretty. Number five, The Outer Worlds. This Obsidian callback to 2010 is a welcome addition to the lineup of games that makes us remember the way that things used to be. 
While it's not anywhere near as expansive as New Vegas was, at least in my opinion, it still achieves a unique world with funny and unique characters that make the universe worth exploring. The gameplay is variable enough, and the RPG systems are nothing to scoff at. It's a blast, but it does feel as though it's a game that's been pulled straight from 2011, which is, after all, kind of what they were going for. But it does hold it back when it's competing against the games that are higher on this list. But one thing is for sure, if you enjoyed Fallout New Vegas and you're looking for a modern title that calls back to those same feelings and emotions, then The Outer Worlds is definitely a game for you. Number four, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This is a title of which I was highly skeptical. An EA published Star Wars game. They don't exactly have a great track record with those. But much to my surprise, they nailed it. This mashup of Dark Souls combat with a difficulty slider and Uncharted-esque exploration and puzzle solving is one that frankly shouldn't work as well as it does. But truly, it does work. It is true that this game doesn't do much of anything new or that it creates itself, but what it imitates, it does very well. I loved my time with the game. And frankly, it would have been much higher on this list if it had brought something new to the table itself, and also if I hadn't encountered so many game-breaking technical issues while playing on my Xbox One X. I did a dedicated video on the game, and I recommend you check it out if you want to see a more detailed exploration of the game and all of these problems I ran into. The point is, this game is great, and especially considering it's a AAA budgeted Star Wars game that isn't terrible, it's definitely one that you should have on your shelf. Number three. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This game was a roller coaster for me. I loved that From Software was trying something new. They dropped the action RPG from their formula and they added in vertical maps and a robust navigational system, and it all works very well. Not to mention that this is probably one of the most polished games this year, alongside number two on this list and it needs to be for this combat to work. Now, while the rhythmic nature of Sekiro's boss fights take a while to get the hang of, once it clicks, it really does click, and you'll find yourself parrying like a god, which is, after all, the goal of these From Software games, to take you from noob to god slayer in the span of a 40 to 60 hour run. So, why isn't it higher on the list? Well, because From Software actually recycles the same bosses multiple times throughout, many, many times. For instance, they use Corrupted Monk twice, Guardian slash Headless Ape twice, maybe two and a half times if you count his wife, Shinobi Owl they use twice, and they use Genikro Ashina multiple times as well. I get it. It can be cool to take on the same opponent multiple times, but when you're also reusing the same arenas, it just makes me think that you're recycling content. Which is why this game lands at number three. Number two. This is the one I really wrestled with for a long time. Death Stranding. I finished my run of the game and had so many conflicting emotions and feelings after spending 40 hours with it. Now I'm doing a huge critique on the game, make sure to sub if you want to see it, and for that critique I'm playing through it a second time. And while doing this, I've found myself looking at the game in a new light contrasted with the way I looked at it before. And this is because, as many of you know, when I first played Death Stranding I was not having it. In fact, I even made a video where I roasted the first two hours. But after giving it some time, I've realized that there is a solid game here. No doubt, a game solid enough to be nominated for Game of the Year and to land at number two on my list. The problem is, it's just weighed down by needlessly long and self-indulgent dialogue in addition to a convoluted delivery of the game's narrative. In my opinion, if Kojima had a co-director on this project that cut a third of the stuff that he wanted to do, like putting an ad on the bathroom stall while Norman poops for some reason, the game would have no doubt been game of the year for me. But Kojima, unchained, while capable of creating one of the most engrossing game worlds and maps I've explored in a while, he is also capable of throwing a lot of literally useless crap in that doesn't need to be there. Like all of the fourth wall breaks. Like. Why? Like, seriously, just why do these need to exist in the game at all? It, it 
literally doesn't make any sense at all. Regardless, I'll dive into all of this in excessive detail in my full critique of the game, which is lining up to be the length of a feature length film. So again, subscribe to see that one that comes out in early to mid January. Number one. And now we've come to our game of the year. I've racked my head on this one and I decided to go with the game for which, when I look back upon it, I have the warmest feelings. The game that I want a sequel for the most. And the game that I think was the most impressive, taking the most risks and utilizing every bit of talent at the creating studio. My game of the year for 2019 is Days Gone. This was a hard choice because I had a ton of technical issues again when I played it at launch before most of the major patches had been released. I outlined all of those in my critique of the game, which again, I'll have linked below. But in my opinion, this was the most ambitious game that came out this year. It was developed by a small team over at Sony Bend Studios, a group that apparently mostly did mobile games before this, and it features an expansive open world and a ridiculously large main cast of characters. As with all of the games this year, there are problems, and I call out all of those in my critique, but no game this year left me wanting more or had as beautifully realized an open world that was dynamic and alive while also post-apocalyptic and dead, or had a story that took me on a roller coaster ride of emotion, like Days Gone. But what was your game of the year? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm really interested to see what all of you think because after all, this has been a very weird year for gaming and I expect that most people's lists will be completely different from each other's. Let's take this time to celebrate gaming as an industry and to talk about which games we love the most over the last 365 days. But that's all for me. Thank you for watching. I love you all and I'll see you in the next video.